Now, in this question, digital sum of a number is obtained by adding all the digits of a number until a single digit is obtained. Find the digital sum of 19 raised to 100. Friends, uh, before we proceed with this problem, I would just like to share a concept with you. Suppose I have a number that is uh, maybe 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Suppose I wish to find out the digital sum of this particular number. So let's begin. 4 plus 5, 9. 9 plus 6, 15. 15 plus 7, 22. 22 plus 8, 30. 39, 40, 41, 42. And then plus 3, 45. That's actually 9. Okay. Similarly, I have other number. Maybe 2, 3, 7, 1, 5, 4. Two. Okay, so, uh, let me find the digital root of this number. It's 2 plus 3, 5, and plus 7, 12, 13, 13 plus 5, 18, 18 plus 4, 22, 22 plus 2, 24. That means 2 plus 4. Finally, we are getting 6. Uh, let's compare both the cases. This number is actually multiple of 9, and this number is not a multiple of 9. Okay, if the number is multiple of 9, the digital sum will always be uh, 9 only. Okay, friends. And in this case, the digital sum is always a remainder which I am getting after dividing this number by 9. Let's divide this number by 9. What I will be getting is, uh, you, you, I hope you are clear with the divisibility test of 9. Let's cancel the uh, number which are making the sum as 9. See this 7 and 2. It is making 9. So let's cancel them. Then 5 plus 4. Uh, we are left with 3 plus 2, 5 and 1, 6. Which is the digital sum of this number. Okay. So I just would make a recap over here. That digital sum of any number is the remainder which we are getting if we divide that number by 9. It is as simple as that. If you are getting the remainder as 0, then the digital sum will be 9 only as in this case. You can take up any other examples. Suppose I have 7, 2, 3, 5, 4. Here, 9, 9 and uh, we are left with 3. So, digital sum of this number will be 3. Or alternatively, we just add up all the digits. That is 7, 2, 3, 5, 4. Here I got 3. Let's see what, what happens over here. It is 7 plus 2, 9 plus 3, 12, 12 plus 5, 17, 17 plus 4, 21. That is 2 plus 1, we are getting 3. Okay, friends. So you can make this comparison and uh, you have to be very, uh, you are, you'll be very clear about the uh, digital sum concept. Okay, now let's do this problem. Just a moment. That means even in this case, the dig digital sum of 19 raised to 100 will be a number or a remainder which we are getting if we divide 19 raised to 100 by 9. So let's divide 19 raised to 100 by 9. Okay, 19 can be written as 18 plus 1 then raised to 100. And if we divide this expression by 9, each and every term will be multiple of 9 except 1 raised to 100. Since all the terms will definitely contain 18 except the last term that is 1 raised to 100. Now 1 raised to 100 is what? 1. Okay. So the remainder which we are getting if we divide 19 raised to 100 by 9 is 1 and so is the digital sum of this particular number. I hope you are clear with the method. You can try some of the problems on your own also. Uh, 4 raised to 44 on, is divided by 44 or 19 raised to 95 divided by 95. In both the cases, what will be the remainder, right? Obviously, the numbers are very big and uh, as well as divisors are also very big. So you cannot go for the direct division. But the problem, this, uh, this uh, type of problems are frequently, very frequently in fact, are asked in CAT examinations, right? And to solve... Uh, the sort of problems you need to be algebraically and logically clear. Just do not put any sort of shortcut. The logic of that particular shortcut, if you don't know, it will be really unhealthy. Okay? So just try to understand the logic behind that, why it is happening and how it is happening. Just blindly do not follow any shortcut. Okay? So, uh, 
just to understand this logic though i have already explained the logic uh, in my division remainder session but further well just make a quick recap over here see any expression suppose it is x plus y whole square plus or minus that will be x square plus minus 2xy plus y square right we have got uh, three terms when we are expanding it now what happens in the entire expansion if uh, if the entire expansion is divided by x what will be the remainder i am talking about remainder not quotient be careful see if i divide this term by x is, uh, by x i'll be getting remainder as zero because x square is there here x x is factor so here also i'll be getting the remainder as zero in this case y square if it is divided by x since we don't know the value of y the remainder will be y square right this okay Similarly, if we divide the entire expression by y, then x square will be the remainder. And if we expand the same rule for x plus y whole cube, then what will happen? x cube plus 3x square y plus 3xy square plus y cube. Right? So in binomial expansion, what happens? Whenever you expand the numbers of this um, expression, each and every term is multiple of both the terms except the one term that is x cube or and y cube right x cube will not be divisible by y and y cube will not be divisible by x right if x and y are not factor of each others okay so if you divide this expression by x what will happen the remainder will be y cube if you divide this expression by y the remainder will be x cube right suppose i put up an example say if you divide 83 plus 3 whole cube by 83 the remainder will be what say this is factor of this okay so the remainder will be 3 cube that's 27 okay so if an algebraic or if a number is broken up into two numbers when one of them is a like factor or this suppose in this example if we see this is factor or this number itself is this then the remainder will be obtained by the other term as we have seen over here okay similarly uh, if we have the expressions like a plus b into a plus c into a plus d a plus e right suppose and if this expression is divided by a the remainder will be b into c into d into e right if it, this expression is divided by a then the remainder will be p into c into d into e right because i just take up the small example a plus b into a plus c so what happens a square plus a b plus a c plus b c now each term is multiple of a only b c is not multiple of a so the remainder will be p into c the same logic if expanded it can be uh, use for this expression also that is p into c into d into e will be the remainder if um, this expression is divided by a now it depends upon the value of a b c d e that what exactly the numerical value of the remainder that we are going to get okay if product of b c d and e is more than a then further we need to take a step we need to uh, further it, uh, it is it will be div uh, divided by a okay i put up an example suppose uh, i have number 102 into 103 into 104 into 106 into 107 and suppose i have to divide this number by 7 right and what is the remainder that i am going to get now from 101 the last number that is divisible by 7 is 98 right so this number can be written as 98 plus 4 right 98 plus 4 so i'm just writing only 4 over here similarly this will be into 5 this will be into 6 or we can write it as minus 1 right because 105 is multiple of 7 so 104 can be written as minus 1 from that similarly it can be written as minus 2 from that we will not touch it because this is already smaller number right just convert try to convert the bigger numbers only this is 1 and this is 2 right so what will be the remainder just product of all these that is 4 into minus 2 into minus 1 into 1 into 2 now if two minus signs are there they will be converted to positive okay now what is happening 4 into 2 it's 8 
if 8 is divided by 7, what will be the remainder? That's 1. Now that 1 into 1 into 1 into 2. So that's finally we are getting 2. Right? So if this expression is divided by 7, we will be getting the remainder as 2. Okay? It's as simple as that. Now, I take one more example. That is uh, the problem from previous RCAT papers. 7 raised to 81 divided by 342. What will be the remainder? Right? Now, 342 itself is an absurd number. Can't you see that? So, what is the connection between these two? See, 7 cube is 343. Right? So, 7 raised to 81 can be written as 7 raised to 3 into 27. So, that is actually 343 raised to 27. Right? Now, 343 can be written as 342 plus 1 raised to 27. Right? And as I have described earlier, if we expand this 342 plus 1 uh, to the power 27 will be getting 28 terms and each and every term will be multiple of 342 except the last number and this power. So that's 1 by 1 raised to 27. Now what's 1 raised to 27? That's 1 only, right? So if this expression 7 raised to 81 is divided by 342, the remainder will be 1 only, okay? So very simply you have applied this logic but apply the logic only when you are algebraically or logically clear. Okay, now if any twisted problem is asked, then also you will be able to solve. Okay, now I come back to your query, that's uh, the first one. I take 19 raised to 95, if it is divided by 95, what will be the remainder? Now 95 is a, a multiple of 19, 95 is actually 19 into 5. Right? We know that. So, this problem can be made uh, some simpler. Right? Now, how do we make that? See, if we, uh, again, I am going to explain the logic by whatever I am doing. Um, now, what happens? See, if you divide a number, you can say dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder. Right? Suppose I have a dividend, say, A, X, and if I divide this by B, x right you can see x is common factor as we can see over here now forget this 95 but this 19 and this 95 we have 19 as common factor so similar pattern i'm taking over here ax is divided by bx right i take out this i don't use x i proceed with a and b right so a will be what b into quotient plus remainder right obviously whatever the remainder you are getting over here. Now, if I multiply this expression by x, what will happen? Ax is equal to bx into q plus rx. Okay. Make the comparison. If a is divided by b, r is the remainder. If ax is divided by bx, then rx will be the remainder. Right? You know this. So, by if you know this by applying this, then also you can find out your remainder. Now listen to me carefully. 19 raised to 95, I write it 19 raised to 94 into 19 and 95, I write it 5 into 19. Now this is actually your x. A is 19 raised to 99, uh, 94 and B is 5. And this is your x that I have taken as common. So what I'll do, by using this, I'll be finding out the remainder in this case. Okay, so whatever is the remainder that will be R and if I multiply that R by this X that is 19, I'll be getting the remainder of this expression. Okay, now when you have to divide by 5, the unit digit of this is only the remainder obviously. So 19 is to 94, the unit digit will be 1 only. So if you divide 19 is to 94 by 5, you'll be getting the remainder as 1. Okay, uh, or uh, this even power of 9 will always end in 1. Okay, so remainder is 1. In this case, that is R is 1. So, if it consider X, then the remainder will be R X, that is 1 into 19, or we can say 19. Okay. So, this is the logic behind that. That should be clear in your mind. Okay. Now, similarly, we can discuss 4 is to 44 divided by 44. What will be the remainder? Right. Now, it's... 4 is to 43 into 4 and this is 11 into 4, right? 
this I am taking it as common, right? Now 4 is to 43 divided by 11, what will be the remainder? Uh, we have one number that's 32 in the power of 2, that's 2 raised to 5. First, first of all, I can write it as 2 raised to 86, right? Now 2 raised to 5 is 32 and uh, 11 3s are 33. So uh, we can make a direct comparison. Now 2 raised to 86, um, 86 is not multiple of 5, so directly we cannot write 2 raised to 86 in the form of 2 raised to 5. So what I'll do, it is 2 raised to 85 into 2, right? Now 2 raised to 85 is what? 32 raised to 17, okay? Now 32 raised to 17 into 2, if it is divided by 11, what will be the remainder? 32 can be written as 33 minus 1 raised to 17, this 2 we are having extra so uh, 33 is divisible by 11 so remainder will be minus 1 raised to 17 so minus 1 uh, like uh, odd power so the remainder will be minus 1 right so that minus 1 into this 2 that's minus 2 okay so if you divide this expression 32 this this entire expression by 11 you'll be getting the remainder as minus 2 so minus 2 if it is remainder then the actual positive remainder will be 11 minus 2 that is 9 okay now we have already taken this 4 as common so whatever we have got the remainder over here that's 9 into that 4 that's 36 will be the actual remainder when 4 is to 44 is divided by 44 okay I'll explain it once again. Listen to me carefully. 4 is to 44 and divided by 44. I have taken 4 as common. Now 4 is to 43 can be written as 2 raised to 86 because we have a number 2 raised to 5 as 32. Right? So I'm trying to convert this 86 into multiples of 5. So that's actually 2 raised to 85 into 2. Now 2 raised to 85 can be written as 32 raised to 17. 32 is closer to 33. So that can be written as 33 minus 1. And if 33 minus 1 is to 17 is divided by 11, the remainder will be minus 1 only because it is minus 1 is to 17. That minus 1 into this 2, that's minus 2. So, finally the positive remainder will be 11 minus 2, that's 9. And the number that we have taken as common, that's into 4. 9 into 4, 36 will be the final remainder. Okay, so if you are logically, algebraically clear, any, 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 any remainder problem can be solved very easily in the, man, uh, like, uh, 25 to 30 seconds, right? Once you are clear, you don't have to write these many steps also, okay? Just do practice with that, um, some of the problems. I put up one example from my side. 4 is to 64 divided by 6, what will be the remainder? Again, between 4 and 6, we have a common factor, that's 2, right? So... 4 raised to 64, I write 63 into 4, or to make it simple, what I do is, I write as 2 raised to 128, so 2 raised to 127 into 2, and 3 into 2, right, now 2 raised to 127, that can be written as 3 minus 1 raised to 127, minus 1 raised to odd power will be the remainder, so the remainder is minus 1, so if we divide this expression by 3, the remainder is minus 1. That means it is 3 minus 1, 2, right? Now already 2 we have taken as common. So that 2 into this 2, the final remainder will be 4. Okay, this is the problem from CAT previous year paper. Okay, now I am sure you got the concept.